Hi all, my name is Rugvid Dighe and I am a Solutions Architect at the Selling Partner API Developer Services team at Amazon. Have you ever wished for a more flexible way to access seller data? Meet Data Kiosk. Data Kiosk is a revolutionary GraphQL based bulk reporting solution in SP API. It shifts the paradigm from viewing data as static reports to the concept of datasets. Developers can now craft their own queries and build custom reports from multiple data fields, offering unmatched flexibility. So what makes Data Kiosk stand out? It provides unparalleled transparency with an interactive schema explorer, detailing the schema and data fields. Get flexible access to both seller and vendor data and shape it the way you want. Say goodbye to underfetching or overfetching data. With Data Kiosk, you can reduce API calls for bulk data retrieval, experience seamless API updates, ensuring an elevated developer experience. Let's dive in and experience the change. We will start from the Schema Explorer page. The link to the Schema Explorer page is added in the description section below. The Schema Explorer allows you to explore all the different available domains, all of the queries and you can pick and choose which fields you would like to request from each domain. Data Kiosk is based on GraphQL, so you can build a GraphQL query for any given domain and submit it into Data Kiosk to be processed asynchronously. The Schema Explorer will take the GraphQL schemas from the onboarded datasets and make them visible to you in a more user-friendly manner. Today we will be using the sales and traffic data as a dataset to build a query and fetch data. In the top left corner, we can select the required dataset. Here, I will choose the sales and traffic data. On the left, you will see Query Builder pane. On the right, we have a documentation pane which shows information like which domain we are looking at and the details of each attribute. We can see the queries which are available under this domain. Here, I will select sales and traffic by date. There are few input parameters that are required for this query. Start date, end date, and then the granularity. These are marked by an exclamation mark. And the field mentioned here is the return type. This is the data that can be retrieved via this query. You can click into fields and see all the different fields that are vended. You will see a description for each field. You will also get types for each field. This is all interactive and everything in here is clickable with descriptions and examples. This would help you guide build the queries that can be processed successfully. Now the next step here is to go ahead and start building our query. On the left, we have our query builder. In this dropdown, I will select sales and traffic by date query. The pane in the middle is essentially the query that will be submitted to data kiosk. This will auto-populate as we use the query builder. So in this case, start date, end date and aggregate by are the required fields for this query. We can start filling out these with some values. Let's do a month of data and then we can go ahead and select which fields we want to retrieve from the domain. I will go ahead and pick some random fields under sales and traffic section. Now you see that this pane has built our query. We are now ready to take this date to data kiosk and submit it. We will go ahead and click on minify to make it in one line. Now we copy this query and go over to Postman client to test out the query. I have a Postman collection set up here with all the different data kiosk endpoints. So I will take the query I just copied from the query explorer and paste it into the body of the create query operation. The request body is sent as raw format with JSON as the content type. I will add the query into the JSON body as shown here and I will escape these strings so that it is a valid JSON. 
we can now go ahead and send this and we get back a query ID. This query ID will be used to identify the query as it is processed asynchronously. Let's copy this query ID and check the processing status of the submitted query. We will need to call the getQuery operation which will return the metadata of the submitted query. When we submit this request, we see the status of the query which shows as done. If the query was not complete, we will see the processing status as in progress. We can also see that there is a data document ID in the response. Let's copy this document ID so that we can call the get document operation next. We will call the get document operation using the document ID and we will get an S3 URL that can be used to download the actual report. You can use either a browser or a terminal to download this report. Now that we have downloaded the output document, we can see each line in the document is a JSON blob. Data kiosk results are vended in JSON line format. This allows you to process the document line by line and get full JSON elements out of it. As a key factor, I would like to point out that through GraphQL, you will notice that each element in these JSON blobs are only those that we requested in the query. Also, the order of the fields is also maintained as they appear in the query. So this allows you to not only define dynamic reports, but also shape the data as you want it. If you wanted these elements in a different order, you have the ability to move things around in the results. This is the dynamic nature of Data Kiosk. Now let's check how to handle errors while working with Data Kiosk. Let's change the query to use an invalid format and try running the query again. Let's use the query ID and check the status of the query. Now we see that the status of the query has changed to fatal. This means that the asynchronous query processing has failed. You will also see an error document ID in the response, which you can use to download the error document. Let's copy this error document ID and then call get document. The error document will explain why the asynchronous query processing failed. We'll receive a similar S3 URL which we can download locally. There we go. We see in the error document that we have a validation error. Wrong type argument for the parameter end date. We will now fix the date again to follow the ISO 8601 format and test again. Voila! We now get a successful response again. This is all I had for you today. Hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more SP API videos and happy coding from all of us at Amazon Selling Partner API team. Thanks for watching.